Hi, I'm Teresa Ruth Howard, and I'm here with Deirdre Gray. Gary. Deirdre Gary. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm so tired. I haven't eaten since then. No, 9.30 this morning. Oh, okay. Because I'm anorexic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I've been yeah. teaching and I'm running. Okay. Gary, I want to make Gary. it great. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Teresa Ruth Howard. I'm here with Deirdre Gary. Mm -hmm. And um, I know her from the yoga studio. Bikram, you all know. Um, but she's also a fitness instructor. And she wanted to weigh in um, on the topic of this week, which is should fitness instructors look a certain way? And so if you give us a little bit about your background okay. in the fitness industry, it would be great. All right. Well, um, first off, I uh, started being a fitness instructor in 1989, but before then, I was a gymnast for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And then it went into being in gymnastics, to being a cheerleader, competing cheerleader, right. all of that. And then it escalated into once I was in college, I started teaching classes um, uh, in D.C. So... Um, I did that, I started in 89, and then I continued to do it once I got out of school and I moved here to New York in 93. Mm -hmm. So I started, when I first started moving here, I started then, started teaching. So during that time, I was a little bit younger, but at the same time, I was definitely in the, probably the best shape of my life. Now, were you teaching aerobics? Or what were you, what I was, was teaching, your... I was teaching, I was teaching step classes. I was teaching um, body sculpting classes. I was teaching um, hip hop dance classes. I was teaching Pilates, right, and then okay. I was teaching spin classes. Okay, and so tell a story about the gym that you worked for mm -hmm. that had the weigh-ins and you know. Had yeah, this, without the mentioning the name of the gym, but like as a as a as a fitness instructor, the things that I did experience was, uh, you know, we were required to not to be a certain weight per se but right, we okay. were required to fit in the in the um in the category of our height and um, the weight category frame where, okay you know although they didn't stick to they didn't stick to it like you had to be exactly 125 pounds if you were 5'4 that wasn't the case but they wanted us to make sure that we maintain a certain image a certain look in terms of, right, of, being, of, of and... being fit we didn't have to be skinny nor did you have to be overweight but if you were thicker you you, you had, had to, to look, look like fit, you were like you worked, you worked out. out right um and how how did that affect you because i know as a dancer when i've gone through those things of, and as a gymnast going through the whole you know weigh-ins mm -hmm. and your weight or your image being a pub a matter of public concern or a public discourse mm -hmm. like you're either too much of this or not enough of that right how did that in the fitness industry in that gym in particular mm -hmm. um, affect you and some of the other trainers? Well, I mean, for me, I think it didn't bother me as much because I came from that, being a gymnast right, for okay. so long, so it was something that I was pretty much used to. But in terms of like, uh, uh, you know, in terms of what, you know, the other instructors, some of them had a really hard time with it, you know. But I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that they weren't walking the walk. That is what I think my biggest thing, and I did, I did, you know, confess mm -hmm. to having, uh, you know, an idea, a concept of what I would like my either fitness instructor or yoga instructor mm -hmm. to look like. And my thing wasn't about being either thin or or ripped up, mm -hmm. but like you say, just walking the walk. If your if your business is fitness, then you look, you should look like. Like you use your own product, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. you should be a walking billboard for what it is that you're representing. Do you think that that's because everybody it doesn't it doesn't affect everybody the same way? Like right. people can work out and eat a certain way, and they just are not going to look like you know the ripped up person. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's it's we should get to a point where we're a little more open with the concept of what? people should quote unquote look like in in the fitness industry? I think we should be open, but we also have to understand that, you know, America's is America is caught up in the whole, you know, health and fitness and like living longer and eating better and, you know, being active and doing things. And it's like, you know, you have to look at it logically and say, you know, uh, how is it that you walk five miles a day, but yet you're still at 320 pounds? Right. What's right. going on? 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's just, it's it's funny. It's not to judge it, but you have to say, if you're, like I, I think I had mentioned to you before, I had taken a spin class at a gym. Right. And the, the substitute instructor didn't look like he ever took a spin class. And when you do is, I've never taken a spin class. When you do, do you have to do it? You do the whole class with the. You do the whole, but as an instructor, you don't have to do the whole class. Oh, okay. Well, that's my question. You know, but when I was a spin instructor, I did the class. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. The only time that I, if I didn't, is if I got off to, to guide people right. and to help them in their form. But the thing that kind of threw me off was that I, this guy just didn't look like he ever took a spin class. Ever. Right. But he was the did substitute. He, he did and it was an okay class. Okay. But it, although it was an okay class, that was fun. I got over it. it right. That wasn't your, kind of it's, it's your but thing. I, mean, I did I did recognize it. Right. But my whole thing is it's like again, you still have to look at it and think about perception. Although he may have been very big and a huge pot belly, you know what I'm saying? But then you still have to be but then you still have to be dealing with complications with that. And thinking. here's the other thing that's that's interesting. Yeah. I just was thinking about as you said that. Mm -hmm. You go like it's a standard. You go like, okay, well, if as a dancer or a gymnast you're supposed to fit a certain criteria. Mm -hmm. As a model or an actress, you're expected to fit a certain criteria. Right. Even as a banker, you know, you have to look a certain way. Like right. you don't go, you're not like wearing Birkenstocks and right. you, know, right. you 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 there is a look that goes with being a lawyer or being mm -hmm. a doctor or mm -hmm. being a whatever. Right. And well, we don't have a problem with that. Like we would definitely have a judgment if you walked into like an investment banker's, you know, office and he looked like a surfer. You'd be like, or whoa. Or if he was tatted up all right. over. Right. You'd be like, whoa. Right. And maybe you shouldn't. Maybe he's completely capable. Right. But there is that concept, that idea that we have. So mm -hmm. I wonder if if we don't get too, um, you know, like touchy-feely sensitive where we mm -hmm. go like, well, maybe we, we, it is okay to go like, well, you actually should reflect. You know, you know what I mean? Like, At least to a certain degree. It doesn't have to be put to a high high degree. Right. I don't expect to see every instructor look like a fitness competitor. I don't expect right. that. That's a whole different arena, a whole different <laughs> lifestyle, right, right, right. a whole different everything. But I do expect the instructor to at least look fit. 